My work at Rombert was considered by some to be rather uh, cerebral and elitist. I don't feel that way about it, but still, uh, um, Rombert felt they had to try and, and attract larger audiences, and so they went for a different kind of work. And so when I came here, I thought, I'd really like to prove them wrong. I'd really like to actually make work which I love, but which also an audience wants. So that was part of my vision for this company. And at Rombert, there had been the resources to work with design, to work with painters and sculptors, which I did quite a lot. And here I thought, OK, I'm going to concentrate on the heart of the matter. That's music and movement, because uh, I had a very good budget, which was much less than Rombert and much less than London Contemporary had been. And so I've explored that uh, for 25 years and found, had a wonderful time doing it and um, use a wide range of music, because uh, luckily I love a wide range of music. And uh, it's always the music that dictates whatever, music, m whatever movement language will suddenly appear to be the, the right thing. It comes out of listening to the music. So that some of my work is very different from others. Uh, but. Um, I certainly know now, in the last five years or, or so, I have, a, I have a sense of, put it very crudely, knowing what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing now. Uh, I don't settle and say, well, I know what I'm doing, so that's fine. I'm still trying to do things that are new. I'm still trying to put myself in situations that I haven't been in before. Um, but I'm able to push the work more and to be more, to take more effort to make sure that every part of the dance is as good as it could be. I create very fast and I go back and look at it and look at it and look at it. And that's one reason why I go on tour with the company. I've been on tour with this company for 25 years because I can see things on stages and I can see things on different stages and realize how something might work better. And I am dedicated to making sure that I don't shortcut any possibilities to make the work better. So I drive dancers mad sometimes by changing things on stage before the opening night and after the opening night. Um, when I make work, I mean, I, I am absolutely inspired by the dancers. They need to be wonderfully physically talented and people who are attractive and, 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 and I'm symp they're sympathetic. I'm not a choreographer, I'm not an artist who works well on tension. I don't construct uh, confrontational situations, I freeze. So I keep good humoured, I make lots of jokes, and everything flows, that's the way it has to be. I've said very clearly that I prepare the music hugely so that I know exactly what it is I love about the music. I never um, prepare movement, never. It, it happens in the studio and it comes out of somewhere and suddenly one thing leads to another and oh, there it goes. Um, I, I, um, I think of myself as drawing in space, drawing with energy. I sometimes talk to audiences about saying, imagine you're you know, a, a, a young person going out into the garden with a sparkler and you light it, and that all that all that flashing light, you can make shapes in the air, or some uh, wonderful films of Picasso painting on glass. I think I'm making lines and making shapes, making sculptural shapes. I love dance to be very three-dimensional. And then, of course, there's the whole thing with music, with phrasing, uh, with with large movements, with small linking steps, which, which means that dance is phrased just the way speaking is phrased, just the way writing is phrased. You just don't have nothing but big words. You have lesser ones which are just as important, but they link from one to the other. So that's all those things, all those things go into making a dance for me. I've been working here for 25 years, and I've been working before that for 50 years, or in all. Uh, it's absolutely wonderful to see people who've been in class, 
who studied with me, who have danced my work, going somewhere else and doing really well. And I just smile to myself and think, well, that was worth being patient with that person. And no wonder I loved her dancing, because look at her now. And, and uh, it, it's, a, it's really, it's one of the, I have to share with you, it's one of the joys of getting older. <laughs> If you stick at something, you have a past. You have, a, a, you said, it's, a, it's like a family. It's like children and grandchildren, you know. And they're all over the dance world now. And, um, and they're very, very generous to me. They come back and say, we had a great time here and you were wonderful to us. And they're very open about it. So that's, you can imagine, that makes me feel really rather good. The truthful answer is that I've never grown up. I've never lost the excitement of going into the studio. I work a lot with young people now, with youth groups, because I was chair of Youth Dance England, and, and I've worked with the CAT scheme all over the country, and I find it absolutely thrilling. I love working with dancers. I love being in the same room as dancers. I've always loved teaching. Teaching as a form of enabling, as a form of... A, of, of, of revealing to people what they perhaps thought they couldn't do. I think that's a really wonderful way of teaching. Uh, um, so it's, teaching has run like a thread through all those 50 years. I have been almost constantly employed, but not always choreographing. There's been quite a lot of teaching, and luckily I love it. Um, but that's what it is. When I go into the studio now, I'm still excited to make a piece. I'm still excited to... I've just been in New York working with New York Theatre Ballet, where I now have two years as resident choreographer. So I'll make a new piece for them next year. Um, I'm discussing with Juilliard, which is a really wonderful school, and I made a piece... I gave them a piece about three years ago, and we're looking into whether I could go back there, and they've made me... Nothing's, nothing's formulated yet, but they've been so welcoming. And it's such an exciting school. It's just full of the most amazing dancers. Suddenly, you know, we've just come back from New York, and in New York, I suddenly thought, OK, so I keep saying to yourself, there's a future. Actually, it's, it's, it's around you. It's, you know, people are asking you to do things. Um, and that still thrills me. I've been very, very lucky. I, it's have been very, very few examples of working somewhere where I was unhappy. Somehow I've avoided those places. You know, there are certain institutions across the world where you know the dances can be quite difficult or the management or what have you. I've, I've worked with wonderful, wonderful companies that have been very enthusiastic and responded very, very warmly. It has to be said that I am re re comparatively pleasant in the studio. Um, you know, there are, there are people who drive you and maybe inspire people by being rather mean. As far as I'm concerned, any person, any young person who says, OK, I really want to be a dancer, well, they're on the side of the angels. They show something very special. And I'm very happy to be in the same room and, and, and really, really happy to make steps for them. I tell you what's changed. Uh, uh, barriers have been broken. Barriers have been beaten down. Uh, when I started, the world of ballet was quite self-contained and uh, they looked slightly askance at these people called contemporary dancers. And, and now that's simply not true, which is really rather wonderful. So in a strange way, what's happening in this building has changed a lot. What Robin wanted to bring to this building is now all over the country, in both ballet schools and in the Royal Ballet with Wayne McGregor con uh, choreographing there, and the whole openness of the whole, the, 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 there are not so many barriers in the world of dance. So training now has to embrace a wider set of skills. And then just as importantly, training in dance institutions now has much more knowledge about fitness and about inj injury prevention. All those things absolutely fascinate me. So I find all those developments really, really marvellous. And so when you get a big company like the Royal Ballet, you know, the people who treat them when they're injured are, are as important as their teachers, are as important as their choreographers, 
and, and uh, there's, a, there's a sense of that. There's a sense of people being cared for, not pushed beyond what they should do if something is wrong. Um, I find all that really terrific. You know, I, 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 I've been around long enough to remember when the sports doctors, the, the Olympic doctors, suddenly realized that what they were applying to athletes could very interestingly be applied to dancers. And they suddenly realized this was a new era, era for, area for them. And they embraced it and they went for it and they gave us lots of advice. Not, of all, not all of it we took, because when you're looking for an athlete, you're looking for the perfect physique for the long jumper, the perfect physique for the high jump, the perfect physique for short, sharp sprints, the perfect phys physique for marathons. And of course, choreographers turn around and say, well, it's the imperfect physique that I love. And, and actually, you've just got to accept that, you know. So it's a very interesting, a very, very interesting area, but, but it has enriched the world of dance, I think, hugely. I want my company to be, I don't want people to be all the same size. I don't want them to all be the same color. Uh, 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 I, I find the, the uh, image, if you like, of dance breaking down barriers and breaking down prejudices, it, I know it can do that, and I find that hugely exciting. And when I was at Romba, someone said to me, someone whom I respected, said, Richard, as the director of you know, uh, an institution which is funded and so on, do you think it's acceptable to have uh, such a high proportion of white dancers? And I'd never thought about it really. And I've thought about it ever since. I make no compromises. I don't have to, because actually there are all sorts of wonderful, wonderful dancers with extremely wonderful gifts who come from all sorts of backgrounds. If it looks like at one moment there's going to be less diversity, I give it a push. I will make sure that time I will really try and see someone who would actually help the company still. You know, um, uh, I spoke to someone who, who came from uh, Jamaica not so long ago, and they said, well, for us, you can go into a building and feel you don't belong. You can just see that there aren't other people like you. That was a very simple way of putting it, but I think a very important way of putting it. Uh, and, uh, you know, I've seen so many, I've seen so many companies get beyond, get beyond the notion that all swans should be white. I know, I know that the dancers in my company who come from uh, um, diverse backgrounds, they are very often, they're really important role models. They're very important role models. And that, that's been going on, for instance, you know, all the way back to Arthur Mitchell at New York City Ballet in the 50s. Balanchine was ahead of his time. Martha Graham had a very diverse company. It's important. It's important, and it and it, it it's the arts should be racist free. They really, really should be. And and uh, you know we are a community where we do what we love, and we are tolerant of all sorts of things, all sorts of people, all sorts of things we should embrace. Uh, and we're doing what we love, so we have no excuse not to. You know, that's what that's what binds us all together. I like thinking of people as different. The person in my company has a personality or or some something in their background that interests me. It's not just their dancing. It's not just their legs and feet and things. Uh, and that's that's been a, been in my mind for a long time. Uh, I feel that uh, dance. I feel dance is a is a hugely healing activity. I absolutely believe in that. I think it actually uh, makes people happier. When I started out, teaching could be quite strict. And if, if someone said to you, you see, dance should make people happy, you think, well, that teacher doesn't seem to think that. <laughs> but now we live in a totally different era. Education is totally different. And, and, uh, and the sensibility about dance is totally different. And yet people are still achieving the most extraordinary things, so it's not like it's made it compromise in any way. I've enjoyed it all. It's been, you know, so it's not, it's not as easy to 
I guess I guess when we first went to New York, that was very exciting. When we went to the Joyce, uh, the first visit we went to the Joyce, and then we did a big tour of America of six weeks, and that was very exciting. And I think also we we started out in quite small theatres, and then we began to uh, take the challenge of being on larger stages. We've been to the Edinburgh Festival Theatre, the Lowry. Um, Theatres are quite some size, and, and the work looks wonderful because they move around so much. Even if there's only a few of them on stage, they zoom about. So that's rather like that performance in Paris I was talking about with Ron Betts. The same thing with my company. And it's always rather wonderful when... Well, I'll tell you something which I loved doing, which was like just 2013 was the Britain centenary, and we did a whole programme to his music. And his music was part of my growing up, so I feel very connected to it. And we did a program at the Barbican, which was all Britain, with wonderful musicians. So that was a really marvellous evening and a marvellous... We did several evenings, but I love doing that. Um, and there have been also a succession of wonderful companies, because dancers do come and go, but sometimes they all gel in a particularly good way and then they stick together for longer. And so we've had a company until quite recently that more or less was together for eight years. And um, that became like a family that really knew each other and they knew what I wanted. Um, so those were really important times to me with this company. We've always been very well behaved and stayed within budget. We haven't run up huge deficits or anything. I think partly because of that, we haven't expanded or formed a second company or do the kind of things which, which are seen today as progress. Uh, I don't know how long-lived progress that will be, but so the challenge was we, we've, we've had amazing support from the Arts Council uh, when we first started, uh, and really up until about four or five years ago, where a kind of new regime came in and they seemed to be ticking boxes and they even reinvented boxes which we didn't fit into. And from then on they just asked me what I thought were the wrong questions all the time. Uh, they never criticised the work but they wanted it to fit this or fit that and they wanted there to be matching funds which is difficult in an organisation where they're also finding funds for the school so that's been a challenge, and, and a challenge where eventually I thought, OK, this is a challenge too far. Uh, I don't want to continue this company on a lesser level than what we've achieved. And I believe, as I said earlier, I believe in continuity. I believe in people growing slowly over time. And in fact, if they work consistently, they grow very fast over time. It wouldn't be my choice to do projects that are very short-lived and then you lose touch with people and then eventually the other one is I haven't had to do it since well even Strider was consistent you know so I've been working with 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 ongoing consistency since 1972 that's when Strider first started I think my my family taught me to have an appropriate sense of humility I think that's no bad thing um, but I'm also absolutely fierce about what I really believe in, which is integrity. I will not compromise my integrity. So I will not do something because it's fashionable. I will not do something because it would increase our funding, if that's the only reason that I would do it. I'm quite stubborn. Uh, I'm very stubborn, is the truth. But I believe, I love what I do, and I believe in it. And, and it, I, I don't think I'm nostalgic. I think that the values of dance that I believe in are timeless and I think I'm dealing with the things in dance that will be there forever.